So the Linux file system has a tree-like structure. And this tree-like structure is also known as the directory tree. A folder is a location that stores multiple files. It is used to organize information. Windows users usually use the word folder. However, in Linux terminology, folders are referred to as directories. So, what Windows users refer to as a folder, Linux users refer to as a directory. They are exactly the same concept, and both terms are used interchangeably. The directory tree. The directory tree is very similar to a family tree, and so each directory or a file has a parent. However, each directory or a file has exactly one parent, and so unlike a family tree where each member has two parents. Also, we have the root directory which has no parents at all. Now we will take a look at how the Linux file system is structured. First, we have the root directory, which is the first or the topmost directory in our tree. It is represented by a forward slash. Under the root, you will find many subdirectories, but we will only cover a subset of those in this video. You will find the bin directory, which stands for binary. This directory contains executable programs and commands that can be used by all the users on the system. Opt is another common directory that you will find. Opt stands for optional. This directory contains commercial software products that are not installed by default on your system. For example, if you are using Ubuntu, you may have noticed that Google Chrome is not installed by default on your system. And if you do install Google Chrome, you will find it located underneath the opt directory. Another common directories are the home and the temp directories. Temp stands for temporary. In this directory, you will find temporary files, files that are often changed or deleted. And so, be careful and never keep any files that you may want to store for a long time underneath the temp directory. Or otherwise you may lose it. var is another common directory. It contains variable data. data that frequently changes over time. These include log files, mail spools, and user databases. Linux is a multi-user environment, which means that many users can access the system simultaneously. Each user is given a directory under the home directory. In this example, we have two users, John and David. A user can store anything in his home directory. And so, John can store his music files under his home directory. He can also have a file phone.txt where he keeps track of his friend's phone numbers. We will refer to this file later on. Now, we will mention two special subdirectories. The first one is the current directory, represented by one dot. The other one is the parent directory represented by two dots. Those are common to all directories in our system. So you can find them underneath any directory. For example, you can find them underneath the root, bin, opt, home. You can find them anywhere. If, our, if, if currently we are at the bin directory, then one dot will refer to the bin directory, which is the current. And two dots will refer to the parent of the current directory, which in this case will be the root. As you can see, we have a tree-like structure. That's why we call it the directory tree. There are two ways to access a file or a directory. You can use the absolute path, which begins with the root directory. The absolute path follow the directory tree branch by branch until the path to the desired directory or file is completed. For example, if John wants to access his file font.txt, he can use the absolute path name. 
First he begins with the root directory, then he goes to home, then he goes to John, documents, and then he access the file font.txt. We use a forward slash to separate between directories. However, if John is currently at his home directory, then he can use the relative path name instead to access his file font.txt. A relative path, unlike absolute path, the relative path starts from the current working directory and the absolute path starts with the root directory. You can think of absolute and relative path using a map analogy. Here is our cute little penguin Fluffy. Fluffy wants to go on a journey from X to Z. In this case, Fluffy has to go to Y first in order to reach his destination. So he takes the absolute path X, Y, Z. You can think of X being the root directory. And now imagine that on another day, Fluffy also wants to go to Z, but this time Fluffy is at Y. Then it will be easier for Fluffy to go to Z directly without going back to X. And so he takes the relative path, which is Y, Z. You can think of Y being the current directory at this time. In the next video, we are going to learn commands that will help us navigate the directory tree.